For more on the markets, I want to bring in Chris Markowski, host of The Watchdog on Wall Street Radio Show and the president of Markowski Investments. Chris, good morning to you. The tech-heavy Nasdaq bearing the brunt of the losses this week. Uh, it is the same index that carried us through some of the roughest days of the pandemic. So what's going on? I think it, the Nasdaq and the tech stocks are a lot more sensitive to the the new narrative right now. What everybody's talking about is inflation and, and whether or not inflation is going to rear its ugly head. I, I've got a bit of a different perspective than what everybody's been pushing and what the Fed's been pushing and these economists have been pushing. Um, I, I pay bills. Uh, I have credit card bills. I see what groceries cost. Inflation's here. It's been here for a long period of time. It's fantastic that, hey, we can go out and get a television for a couple hundred bucks or a cheap laptop at Staples, uh, but the items and the goods that we buy every single day continue to go up. Uh, plus, you take a look at certain commodities. You look at building materials. Um, I, I don't know what these people talk about worrying about when inflation is going to rear its ugly head. It's already here. Uh, it is a great perspective. As somebody uh, who goes food shopping, I am just blown <laughs> away. I, like three hundred dollars. No, I don't later, do the food like, shopping. I, I pay the bill. <laughs> I pay yeah, the no, bill. I, I don't. Shop. Got to be full disclosure there. <laughs> uh, I think you make a really good point. Um, so, why? What did Fed Chair Jerome Powell say? I mean, he, he seems to indicate that the the Fed is not going to really make any big changes. Uh, so, why was that so worrying yesterday? Was it his remarks that kind of sparked this, uh, or or is it was this kind of negative sentiment been there for for a little bit? We have to understand how the markets operate nowadays and the algorithms that are involved in the computer programs. Uh, when you have the, you know, Jerome Powell come out and talk about he's worried about inflation moving forward, that automatically sets off alarm bills and, and sell programs that are going to push things uh, in a certain direction. Uh, so that that's to be expected. Um, again, you know, I don't know how much, you know, money they're going to be more money they're going to be able to pump out. Um, again, they keep saying that they're going to buy, buy, keep buying. Buying bonds, we already know that China and Japan has lowered uh, their treasury holdings, meaning they're going to have to continue to print money. Uh, this on the heels of a, a stimulus package, another $1.9 trillion, and obviously it's, it's moving towards the Senate right now. Um, money supply is at uh, ridiculous highs. So uh, again, inflation is here. Uh, I expect it. And, and again, um, you know, people should should understand. Uh, you take a look, uh, real estate prices, various different markets around the country, uh, highs that we haven't seen since prior to the Great Recession. Uh, again, uh, you know, what do you expect is going to happen at this point in time with that much money out there? Uh, switching gears, we're waiting for the, the big February jobs report. It comes out in about an hour from now. Uh, the expectations are that hiring picked up a bit. What are you looking for in this report? Um, again, we had a pretty bad number in December. Uh, it was I think it was down 220 something thousand, 49,000 last month. Um, I, I think it's picking up to some degree, but I do think many businesses out there are being somewhat cautious. Uh, you're a small business, you're a restaurant owner out there, and all of a sudden your occupancy has gone from 25% to 50%. You might bring somebody on, you might not. Uh, again, you're, you're going to be very, very cautious in a bit of a wait and see mode. Also, many businesses as well, uh, considering this $15 an hour minimum wage that is coming down the pike and how that's going to affect them moving forward. Uh, are we going to be adding uh, more of these self-checkout lines? How are we going to go about handling all of this? There's a lot of uncertainties out there still uh, for small business owners, and that's what really needs to come back. We're not going to see the full hiring coming in with cruise lines yet and, and all of these uh, various different the travel oriented entertainment industries as of yet. So I do think that the job growth moving forward is going to be a bit muted. Uh, on that note, in terms of any type of reopening, what are the reopening stocks that you're looking at right now? I, I don't look so much in regards to companies that they're going to they're going to pop over the short term. I look at the fundamentals over the long term. I, I'd like to see um, and, and hopefully some of the airlines are going to start coming back. I think they're doing some ingenious things in regards to booking where they'll have various different flights. If I've got to fly from New York. Uh, to Florida, let's say over the course of a day, they may start out with four flights. Uh, they'll see who's booking. They'll start canceling them. Uh, so obviously trying to be as, uh, as efficient as possible. Um, the cruise lines out there as well, they, they've got to be champing at the bit in regards to getting back. And I do think that there's uh, some pent up 
shall we say, um, aggression uh, when it comes to human beings at this point in time, wanting to get out and about. So I, I do think that some of these companies, uh, once uh, they can figure out a way uh, to make everybody feel that much safer, will do quite well. Um, and just in terms of the overall markets right now, do you do what inning do you think we're in of this of this bull run? Obviously, we're seeing the Nasdaq really pulling back. Is the Dow going to pull back as well? Is this bull run over, or is this just kind of a blip? I'm not big when I'm trying to decide, you know, what the overall movement of an entire market is going to be. Again, uh, you go back to Benjamin Graham. Every company has an intrinsic value. If I own XYZ company and it's done very, very well and it's become too large of a part of a portfolio, I'm going to trim that position down to size and rotate those assets into other companies that are great, fundamentally sound companies, but might not have done as well during that period of time. Uh, not that I'm going to sell the entire position because I'm saying, hey, it's going to still be a great company five, 10 years down the road. This is what people need to do to properly position themselves. Trying to guess what the market is going to do, try to guess bulls and bears is an exercise in futility. It really is. No <laughs> one's been able to do it throughout history. So don't. Uh, look for companies that are fundamentally sound. And the old you know, saying, you know, ridiculous cliche, most people don't follow it. Buy low, sell high. <laughs> It's it's a it's an expression for a reason, right? Um, yeah. Chris Murkowski, host of the Watchdog on Wall Street Radio Show and the president of Murkowski Investments. So great to have you on on this Friday morning. 